This is episode 66 of our Road to Unicum, and today we review the Sheridan. This is a tier 10 American light tank in World of Tanks, and up to this point, this is the weakest of the tier 10 light tanks that I played. I want to talk a bit about the penetration drop-off we've discussed in other videos. You can see that at 100 meters, the penetration for the silver Ippy CR round is 236, but that drops all the way down to 189 at 500 meters. Now, just looking at that alone, may not seem odd, but that doesn't exist for any other tank. And then, of course, heat doesn't have any penetration drop-off, so a cynic might think, well, this is a way to encourage players to have to fire premium ammo. Now, you can best understand the penetration drop-off if we look at the Tier 9 T49 with the 90mm gun. You can see the penetration at 100 meters is 212, but it drops off to 193 at 500 meters. So, the Tier 9 90mm gun actually has higher penetration than the Tier 10 105mm gun at 500 meters. And this isn't just specific to the Sheridan. You can see this with the T100 light tank. It starts off at 230 millimeters of penetration at 100 meters, drops to 184 at 500. And then if we look at the Tier 9 T54 lightweight, it starts off at a lower value, 208. So it starts off 22 penetration millimeters penetration lower, but it finishes at the same 184 millimeters penetration at 500 meters. Now, some of you may say, well, you know, light tanks aren't supposed to be snipers, etc. Of, of course, and you've never seen me play that or played it that way unless there was a really good tactical reason for doing so. But, you know, the bottom line is if you're talking about pretty steep penetration drop-offs, pretty soon your ability to penetrate tanks frontally takes a pretty significant hit, right? So we're going to look at a... A tier 10 battle here in Mountain Pass, and you guys have often asked me, you know, what do you do when your team just deploys like a bunch of knuckleheads? And you are going to see that in this video. In this map, the most important area to fight and try to win is the south area of the map, which is where I'm heading. Ice Road is a funnel, and even if you make it down towards the D7 area, you can get stuck there because you can eat flanking fire from people on the bridge or firing from the ditch area in the middle of the map. So this is a, a classic example of a team deploying very poorly. In particular, like brawling mediums and especially heavy tanks should be coming over to where I am. Right. This is the area that usually decides who's going to win. Now notice I try to back up just before firing and set 430 to try to make the bushes solid. I was actually expecting to get spotted, but I do manage to, because I wasn't spotted, to squeeze off a second shot. And then watch as I exit. I'm going to go ahead and keep this little rocky area between me and them and then when I'm going to cut right to left I'm going to do so at a very sharp angle almost perpendicular right so I want to minimize the window that they have to fire at me and also from their perspective look like I'm cutting hard left to right so that you know if they're going to try to hit me they're going to have to lead their shot appropriately they're going to have to move their aiming reticle which will introduce some bloom so we're going to drop to a zero to three deficit right off the bat and their tanks are going to be able to push all the way up to the 1-2 line. Now, in the past, I've run back to where the T-44 is, but there's a really big problem. If you give up too much ground, you'll get boxed in, and then they can have snipers down by uh, J-1, uh, H-1, firing at your tanks, and you guys can't see them. All right, so this area here where I am, I'd actually never tried this particular position because I've never been in such a situation where a team completely failed to play the south area of the map and this 430 I missed my shot at him through his hull because I was too bad <laughs> too busy like like chewing out my team in chat um, but the 430's hull down he's in a very strong position for an RU me medium and right here I make a mistake I didn't wait long enough before popping out and I was still spotted I also need to make sure that you know when I fire to have a good idea whether or not I'm going to be spotted like right there that heavy tank has really poor vision control, and frankly, if I want to avoid getting spotted, what I should be doing is uh, firing a little further back toward the north, right, or, or towards you as you're viewing this. Now, notice that there is one thing that I did. I knocked down that tree. You can see there's a tree to my left. You can knock down trees to create your own bushes. It's a really powerful tactic, and then their Waffen Traeger pulls up too far, and he just absolutely gets smashed. He took over 1100 damage there, so we've dropped him down into one-shot territory, which is great. And since I'm sitting far enough back where all the bushes are now solid, I can fire and there's a low likelihood that I'm going to get spotted. Now, you can hear that the shot didn't penetrate. There's a few big issues with the tier 10 lights. Like this gun has a very poor base accuracy of 0.40, so it's not very good at 
weak spot hunting. So, you know, even though these targets are only like, you know, 200, 225 meters away, I'm having difficult, difficulty landing my shots in the lower front plate of those heavy tanks. Now, I'm in a position where obviously I'm not already safe. You know, I did get uh, just splashed, uh, stunned by Artie earlier. Thankfully, I didn't take any damage. So I need to keep moving around a bit and not be too predictable. And as much as possible, get that first shot advantage over and over because I've got this trifecta of, you know, bush cover that I'm sitting well behind and then that rock to dip into whenever I've been spotted. And the main thing that we've been able to do is we've been able to stall their push from the south side of the map and we're just buying time and we're keeping this match close. Now, as far as the tier 10 lights go, the Sheridan has a couple of nice characteristics. One, it has the Alpha 390, which, you know, is a pretty healthy chunk and higher than some of the tier 10 mediums. And then the other thing is it has 10 degrees of gun depression, so it's really good at ridge fighting. But, you know, that being said, this tank has a ginormous profile and ex extraordinarily soft. So you're vulnerable to HE, you know, anywhere along your tank. And um, it's also very, very uh, light. So tanks will ram you, even tanks that look smaller and out damage you. There is one thing that our team did, which was really helpful. Our E4 pushed up and, you know, certainly he's got a really scary gun. And he's managing to stay alive, but it's, you know, his being here is huge because, you know, he's been able to work some damage on their tanks in the back. And then you know, there you see the match got the first shot advantage. So, you know, I, I feel like when I'm playing with the Sheridan, this was the hardest tank that I've had to play to get to Super Unicum for a light tank up to this point. And it's because, like I said, mechanically it's flawed. Poor base accuracy, huge penetration drop off, huge profile, squishy armor, and it's tall. So you, you got to be very careful when you're driving a big, soft, squishy blimp tank like this. And you know what I found with the Sheridan is, you know, I've managed to drag the win rate up to 59% just by sheer grit and determination. Like I feel like when I'm playing this particular tank, it's like you know, going into a sword fight with a bronze sword. You know, so and everyone else is as sporting steel swords. It's it's that much weaker. Now there is one tactical thing that their their team that's got installed here along the one-two push, they've they've either needed a while ago to pivot and redirect and go somewhere else, like go down into the ditch, for example, and they'd have to do that by going counterclockwise, or they need to push up together and just bully us. And, you know, I've been their most problematic tank. If they just moved up to me, got rid of me, that would really help them. Now our standard B is doing something foolish. He moved up, where he's trying to exchange and brawl with the 430, which is allowing the 430 to, you know, get his reload up. And the standard B is super squishy. So that guy kind of threw away his hit points. Our WZ, who's kind of belatedly come up, it's going to kind of make the same mistake. The one thing I'm really concerned about is that FV, because that can one-shot, you know, any of us. The tank is just absolutely <laughs> terrifying. But you can see, like, their 110 sitting all the way in the back. So, you know, he's holed down behind the carcass of that Pershing. So while that is protecting him, he can't spot or see anything. So he's not really able to contribute. And you've got to decide, you know, if you're in a lane and you're being outvisioned like they are by me, you know, to, to stop and go do something else. Like, their best chance, really what their T-100 should have done, a T-100 light tank, he got up on the plateau and was trying to fight the guys who were to the northeast of me. He should have focused on, on helping to kill me. If they had done that, we would have lost the spotting advantage. They would have been able to push up with confidence, and I think we would have lost this match very badly. Now, finally, their 430U is going to go ahead and make the push. You know, he still has got a pretty good chunk of health. And remember, the early shot that I had on him, didn't penetrate, and whether that's a combination of poor accuracy or you know penetration drop off, either way, you know I was at risk here of getting killed. But thankfully, I landed that you know snapshot as it came around the corner, and you know obviously since I'm the guy who's pre-aiming, I'm going to have the advantage. So I definitely you know like if you're if you were to ask me, do you recommend playing the Sheridan? I was, no, absolutely not. Like <laughs> stop at the uh, a T49 is great. Right, that's a really fun tank. You can play it with a derp, you can play it with a 90 millimeter. You know, as I've said before, for you know pub matches, I find the 90 millimeter to be more flexible and consistent. The derp gun is, you know, obviously a lot of fun. But here, you know, just working this 110, using that first shot advantage in my camo. It is worth noting that the Sheridan has really bad camo. Like roughly speaking, if you look in the garage, the camouflage value is something in the range of 30, so it's actually lower than some of the RU mediums, and it's certainly lower than the bat chat, which is somewhere, I think, in the mid-30s, right? And so, you know, if you're in a position where the 
you know, medium is not moving, so they've got their stationary camo value, they can outspot you. So I was actually expecting this to be a first class badge, um, if not an ace tank or frankly, I still haven't aced, aced this tank, but you know, I did lead our team with 4400 damage and for the most part, you know, our tanks that went down ice road, they did win the ice road, but they did pretty much through sheer weight of numbers and you know, it was up to the rest of us to kind of stall their push and prevent them from winning the areas of the map and getting to our arty, which was a really big deal. Um, I did want to share with you kind of a, a really fun achievement. I've recently managed to get all of my light tanks from tiers 5 through 10 to a super unicum W and 8. So that's 2900 or higher with 100% silver ammo in pubs. And, you know, as I referenced before, the Sheridan was by far uh, the hardest tank that I've played just because it's, you know, it's mechanically inferior. There are a lot of people, by the way, who will say what Light Tank Fun did on our Watts subreddit, which is that W8's meaningless metric to measure light tanks because it doesn't uh, factor in assist damage, and that's more of an issue with the Watt API than the fact that w is just ignoring it, right? And you know, while that is true, it doesn't take into account assisted damage. People who tend to be good with light tanks know how to work in their gun safely. So spot when you need to spot, spot and you know work in damage and do what I did which is leverage hard cover and soft cover to get that first shot advantage over and over again and to have that hard cover to protect you so like I said, there's a very big generalization that oh you should be focusing primarily on assist damage as a light tank and that's not true you should be focused on damage contribution so that's your gun plus assisted damage which is spotting and tracking damage we're going to cover the AMX 5100 we had some Patreon supporters and other viewers who said they wanted to see it so we're going to be looking at that next I hope you enjoyed the video take care